Growing up, we learn how to do volunteers help burn victim Ma Hongying on her path to recovery. We meet 12-year-old Christopher Yang to learn what inspires him to adopt a meatless diet. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Helen L. Thank you for joining us. Over the next three days, we'll be covering the story of five-year-old Ma Hongying from Guangdong, China. In March of last year, Hongying was caught up in an explosion in her home and suffered third-degree burns to 40% of her body. When city volunteers learned of this tragic incident, they began to provide assistance to tell Hongying on her path to recovery and help the family get through this difficult time. Her father didn't have to work overtime that day. He brought gas home with him. I smelled it and had warned him about it. I heard a loud bang and the next thing I knew was the balcony had caught fire. We were cooking food in the kitchen as well at the time so I quickly ran to turn the gas stove off. Then I heard my daughter scream, Dad, help me! She has burn scars all over her body, on her hands, arms, stomach, face, and especially on her thighs and legs. When city volunteers in Guangdong learned of the accident, they immediately formed a team to care for the family and offered to subsidize Hong Ying's medical costs. As Hong Ying suffered deep burn injuries, her wounds have resulted in scar contractures which have affected her joint and bone development. Today, she will be undergoing her second surgery. Hong Ying's panic and anxiety raised alarm bells in city volunteer Yu Li Se. Still reeling from the accident and dealing with her physical pain has caused Hong Ying to become easily restless and agitated. Merely administering anesthesia prior to the surgery became a long battle between her and the nurses. In the moment, Hong Ying's mother, Li Tingyan, feels nothing but helplessness. Li intentionally kept her distance so that her daughter would not turn to her too much and thus delay the surgery. I promise I'll just take a minute, all right? Hong Ying, you have to be brave, otherwise your knees won't get better and you won't be able to go bike riding with me in the future. After what seemed like endless hours of waiting and convincing, the medical team insisted that the anesthesia had to be administered immediately and could not be put off any longer. <laughs> The young girl's desperate screams and cries tore at everyone's heart. <laughs> 
While Hong Ying was in surgery, Yu Li so returned to the Tsuji Tianhe office to attend a study session where she later received a message. <laughs> This is when she needs our support the most. Let us give her our encouragement. Continuing her tour around Taiwan, the founder of the Tzu Foundation, Master Jingyan, arrived in Taichung. While there, she held a talk with local Tzu volunteers as well as volunteers in training and encouraged everyone to persevere in working in the interest of the public, even in the face of adversity. Wang Hongjun, who was diagnosed with leukemia nine years ago, once thought his life had come to a dead end. Fortunately, he found a bone marrow transplant match through the Buddhist Tsuji Stem Cell Center. This time, he brought his two-month-old son to see Master Zhen Yin. I never thought I could extend someone's life, which then had another life. Master Zhen Yin listened to the sharing of volunteers in training, while volunteers in training from Yunlin, Jiayi, and Tainan watched the talk through a video conference from Hualien. I used to daydream about making more money and getting a bigger house. Now I feel a bit guilty just seeing a lot of food in my lunchbox. Among the volunteers in training are 16 staff members from Taichung Tsuji Hospital. Their willingness to carry out the missions was impressive. The master encouraged all to stay firm, even in the face of hardship. The city volunteers who worked to comfort burn victims of the Bali water park explosion overcame such challenges. I almost cried back then. I thought we just want to do good deeds. Is it really that hard to do? With the master's words of encouragement, such volunteers will continue to care for those in need with love and sincerity. To mark the 20th anniversary of the Tsuji Johobaru branch in Malaysia, 112 Tsuji volunteers from the area traveled to Taiwan to be closer to their Tsuji roots, as Master Jianyin is currently visiting Tsuji locations across the country. These volunteers from Malaysia seize this rare opportunity to follow the master. At the Jing Ho in Taichung, 112 Tsuji volunteers from the Tsuji Johobaru branch in Malaysia put on a sign language performance to express their decision to walk steadfast on the Bodhisattva path. To mark the 20th birthday at the Tsuji Johobaru branch, local volunteers flew to Taiwan to learn more about Tsuji's history and philosophy. Twenty years ago, Tsuji volunteer Liao Shutian, the first Tsuji seat in Malaysia, began promoting the organization's ideals after learning of the good deeds done by Master Zheng Yan. In just three months, we received four to five cases that needed to be looked into. These cases inspired more than 20 kind-hearted people to join the organization. Slowly, Tsuji started to flourish in Johor Bahru. As Master Zheng Yin is currently visiting various city locations across the island, these volunteers from Malaysia decided to join the Master on her trip to Taichung. 
这一次真的是 We're truly blessed because this is a very meaningful experience. All of us are very happy because we received so much Dharma joy. Touched by her disciples' effort to work as a team, Master Jianyan sees this chance to offer some words of encouragement. A hundred and twelve city volunteers from Johobaru presented letters on which they had written their vows to Master Jianyan. Despite not being able to stay close to Master Jianyan all the time, these volunteers knew that their hearts will always be connected to the Master. In a weekly series on young vegetarians, today we traveled to the United States to meet 12-year-old Christopher Yang. When Yang was four years old, he saw a live fish killed at a supermarket was devastated by the scene. Later, the young boy decided to go vegetarian as a way to safeguard our sentient beings. My name is Christopher Yang. I'm now 12 years old and I'm going into eighth grade. to graduate from college as soon as I can, so I started homeschooling this summer. I like programming because it's different from the regular subjects that I do, and I usually program educational ones so I can help people. My vocabulary a couple of years ago was pretty behind, so I wanted to make an app that can help myself and others to practice vocabulary that they need. My dad has a garden, and sometimes we have different vegetables depending on the season. Before, we always thought that it was okay to eat meat or fish. We never imagined that we would end up being vegetarians. When Kai Chen was four years old, he saw live fish killed at the supermarket and was extremely sad. After that, we decided to go meatless. I saw a couple of tanks full of fish, and there were people requesting for a particular fish to be catched. And when the butcher was trying to catch the fish, all of the fish in the tank were actually panicking and swimming all around. And when the butcher got the fish, he washed it and slammed it up really hardly on the table and started chopping it up. And the way he chopped it up really scared me and also shocked me. It, it made me sad too. So after that, I never wanted to eat meat. At first, we just followed what my son wants. You can all the red ones out here. I thought that my son would return to his normal diet after a while. However, surprisingly, he was determined to continue being a vegetarian. I think that being a vegetarian is something that can help the world. A vegetarian is more of a mission than a diet, because I know many people who respect animals' lives because they have animals themselves. It's kind of hard to cook a vegetarian dish while also cooking a meat dish because it's also more work for my mom. So our whole family decided to just become a vegetarian. I like vegetarian dishes in general because it doesn't have the smell of meat and it also doesn't have the texture of animal byproducts. After a while, I realized that going meatless is very good for our bodies. I feel more energetic and don't feel drowsy after eating anymore. Being a vegetarian is it's healthier for me. I feel a lot better. 
这整个吃素的过程。I think going vegetarian has had a positive impact on my family and I. A Shantling Dai community in Kaohsiung, 197 poor yet deserving students were recently recognized in Tsuji's new Shu Scholarship Award ceremony. Among the recipients was second grader Zheng Chongzhen, who is raised by her grandmother and loves going to school. Among the 197 new Shu Scholarship recipients, 80-year-old Zheng Chongzhen is one of the smaller students. This second grader who loves to go to school was given a full attendance award. Being outgoing, she likes to play with friends and study. Since Chongzhen's parents are divorced, she's being raised by her grandmother. Living in Shanling Daai community, she goes to Daai tutorial after school, where she helps her teacher. She's willing to follow everyone in doing things, even if she does not know how. Sometimes she takes initiatives as well. Their progress is our biggest reward. Now that she has received a full attendance award, Chongzhen hopes that she can be recognized with a progress award next time as a way to reciprocate the love of her family and teachers. In our final look at the dangers that threaten Taiwan, we'll focus on the country's nuclear power plants. Around the world, most nuclear power plants are decommissioned after about 30 years of use, so Taiwan's first and second nuclear power plants are way past their retirement. While both are also listed as among the world's three most dangerous nuclear power plants by Natural Magazine, not to mention Taiwan has run out of places to store spent fuel rods, which is a disaster in itself. Ms. Lin, who lives in Taipei's Xinyi district, lives within a 30-kilometer radius of Taiwan's first and second nuclear power plants. 0.143 microsieverts, sometimes spikes up to 0.2 microsieverts are detected. Readings taken by civil society are typically two to three times higher than those done by the Atomic Energy Council. Our monitoring station, our readings are shown in real time. To look into the discrepancy, Dia TV's reporter conducts his own reading at a park in Xinyi district. Radioactive contamination is everywhere around us as contaminants are carried everywhere by the wind. The closer the detector is to the surface, the higher the reading because contaminants tend to accumulate on the ground. However, these readings are nothing compared to the threat of a nuclear disaster. According to Nature magazine, Taiwan has two of the world's top three most dangerous nuclear power plants. Three years after the Fukushima nuclear disaster, an expert from Taiwan decided to conduct his own investigation. Streets and buildings near the power plant are empty due to the severe radioactive contamination within the 30 km radius of the plant. Taiwan has been fortunate that no nuclear disaster has occurred in the past 37 years. But will its luck run out one day? Yes, the Sanjiao Fault is close to the first and second nuclear power plants, while the Hengchun Fault is next to the third plant. The location of where the plants are built is questionable, while the aging equipment malfunctions frequently. The first nuclear power plant was designed to hold 1,000 spent fuel rods, but the number is quickly approaching 3,000, far exceeding the capacity of the storage pool, which is very dangerous. The plant's number one generator has run out of room to store spent fuel rods and was forced to shut down early. Theoretically, spent fuel rods will need to be put into dry cask storage. However, currently, all of Taiwan's spent fuel rods are placed in storage pools. Just one spent rod is more toxic than 100,000 barrels of low-level nuclear waste stored on Orchid Island. Contrary to the common belief, the nuclear waste stored on Taiwan's island is 500,000 times that of the storage facility in Langyu. 
typically the average lifespan of a nuclear power plant around the world is only 30 years, so Taiwan's first and second nuclear power plants should have retired already. As Generator 1 of the fourth nuclear power plant was completed in 2014 and was about to begin operation, it was sealed due to anti-nuclear power protests in the country. Sealing a power plant is not the same as locking up a warehouse and leaving. You still need to keep the basic system running. Two-third of the plant remains in operation, while the reactor and few key components are under maintenance. This is the roller blade of the plant's water pump, which is meant for cooling the reactor. Afraid that the blade will rot sitting in sea water, it has been removed for storage. The plant, which has cost taxpayers over 9.6 billion US dollars to build, has been at the center of the country's struggle, with energy shortages and anti-nuclear protests. Is nuclear power the best choice of energy for humans, or poison that will harm future generations for thousands of years? The choice we make today will affect us all tomorrow. So they first reached out to those in need in Myanmar in 2008 after the devastation led by Sekolo Nargis in Tain Township to help rice farmers by giving them rice seeds for free. Now the livelihoods have improved for these farmers. They make a daily donation to their rice banks so to help other less fortunate people. In Myanmar's Thanabin village, one sees luscious green patties everywhere. Though it begins to rain as city volunteers arrive for a visit, Wu Min Dan still shows them his field. If I hadn't received those free seeds from you, I'd probably still be in debt right now. Without needing to buy seeds, I saved a lot of money that year. Back in 2010, Wu Min Dan received free rice seeds from Tsuji. Now five years later, he has doubled his yield and paid off his debt. I don't want to kill needlessly either, so I speak to the pests in my field. I tell them to eat up and then please leave, so I don't use pesticide as they will leave on their own. Now that his life has improved, U Min Dan knows to reciprocate the love he has received, and thus follows after training volunteer U Din Dun in donating to rice banks. Though we are no longer in debt, we are still struggling, so we can only make a little donation. By donating their rice, these farmers, numbering over two dozen, are transforming from receivers to givers. As Mid-Autumn Festival is just around the corner, city volunteers in Jilo, Taiwan visited care recipients with egg rolls to purchase from the children or as bakery. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.